So in today's lesson, we're going to add in this extra bx to our equation to see what happens when we graph it. So remember how we talked about this earlier, the a can tell us the vertical stretch, vertical compression, the c tells us where the vertical shifts went, up or down. But now when we introduce this middle term, this bx, how does that change everything? Well, now we can actually find the axis of symmetry and the vertex using um, a formula. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is going to be what we call negative b over 2a, which also happens to be the axis of symmetry. And to find the actual vertex, all you have to do is plug in that negative b over 2a. So the vertex is actually going to be the point negative b over 2a comma f of negative b over 2a. And if you don't understand that function notation very well, don't worry. We're going to do an example of this in a moment so you can see what I mean by this f of negative b over 2a. But you're basically just plugging in x to find the y. Okay? And then the c, what happens to that c? Remember how that used to move our vertex up or down? Now what it's going to do is it's going to become our y-intercept. So the y-intercept is at the point 0, comma c. So this now also gives us some things to think about when we're making our table when we're graphing. Okay? In the video, we're going to talk about actually just how to find axis symmetry and vertex, and then we'll go over the graphing together in class. All right, so let's take a look at the first example. We have two pieces to this. I want to find my axis of symmetry and then use that to find the vertex. Remember, to find the axis of symmetry, we're using this formula, x equals negative b over 2 a. And remember, you get a, b, and c by first making sure you have your equation in standard form, and then looking at the coefficients. So the number in front of x squared is always a, the number in front of x is always b, and remember, take the sign in front of it too, so that's a negative 4, not a positive 4, and c is the constant on its own. Okay? For us, C doesn't really matter too much to find the axis symmetry, but it will matter when we graph later on, so just keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and plug in A and B. You always want to do the opposite of B, so remember this negative B is actually negative 1 times B, if that helps you remember. So I'm going to do negative of negative 4 in the numerator times 2 times 2. So this is going to give me positive 4 over 4, which is 1. So my axis of symmetry, remember, needs to be an equation, starting with x, because it's a vertical line, is x equals 1. Now, how do I find that vertex? Well, that's using the second piece. Let's find f of whatever the axis of symmetry is. So that is just basically saying, take this 1 and plug it in for x. So instead of having x, I'm going to take out x squared and put in 1 squared, right? Take out the x and put in 1 and then do your PEMDAS. Exponent first, then let's multiply, and then add and subtract. And remember, your vertex is a point, so don't just say it's 3, but it's going to be the coordinate 1, 3. And that's going to be either the top or the bottom, right, the maximum or the minimum of our function. Okay? And that's really it for today's video. What I want you to also see, though, is we're going to do the U-try problem together in a moment. You can get fractions from this. So by introducing that bx, now we're moving our vertex around. And this can also give us an axis of symmetry that's 1 half, that's 3 eighths, right? That's 2 sevenths. So be OK with fractions. So I want to do number 1 with you and then have you guys try 2 and 3. And um, just letting you know, these are all going to have fractions. So be prepared for that, OK? So if we take a look at number one, go ahead and take out your a and b. Well, hopefully you see a is three, b is negative two. What do you think c would be? Well, if we needed c, c is going to be zero, okay? So my aos, my axis of symmetry, so you can abbreviate this as aos as well if you'd like, x equals negative, negative two over two times three, right? Negative b over two a. So that's positive 2 over 6, which gives me 1 third. And remember, that's okay. It's okay to have a fraction, all right? Now, to find the actual vertex, we're going to take this 1 third and plug it in. So f of 1 third equals, let me make that a little clearer, f of 1 third 
3 times 1 third to the second power minus 2 times 1 third. And remember, don't be afraid of fractions. They work just like, you know, we've practiced in middle school and elementary school, right? Do your exponent first. So 1 third times 1 third is 1 ninth. Then let's go ahead and multiply. So we get 3 ninths minus 2 thirds. Let's get this up so I have a little more space. Um, reduce if you'd like. So 3 ninths I know reduces down to 1 third. And this happens to get me a lovely common denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and just subtract across the top to get negative 1 over 3 as the y value of the vertex. So the actual vertex, remember, is when you put x and y together. 1 third, negative 1 third. All right, so we want to be OK with this happens. So go ahead and take your time, try 2 and 3, and then we'll check, and that'll be it for this video. All right, go ahead and check your answers. So 2 ended up with no fractions, but 3 did only when we were solving for y. Um, just be careful if you get this 41 over 2. Feel free to leave it the way it is as a reduced fraction. This one happens to divide into a nice terminating decimal, meaning it doesn't go on forever like 1 third does. So you could write it as 20.5, but I encourage you guys to keep it as a fraction just because if you ended up rounding 1 third to 0 0.3, you'd actually get marked wrong most of the time. So um, just be careful with that. Okay, so notice I didn't show you that much of my work here. I just gave you the key points. So please come back to class with questions if you have any questions about how I got any of these numbers. All right, and thanks for listening.